All right. So we are live. Let's wait. Let's wait 10 seconds to get people to get in here. But yes, sir. We are live, everybody. Let's wait for a couple people to get in. Um, yeah, I got a lot of got a couple stuff on the docket today to talk about. So I uh, got my uh got got some stuff to talk about here. All right, let's, let's just go for it. Yeah. What is up, everybody? Oh, God. Well, I got no people in here. What the hell? <laughs> the number's kind of off. The number's kind of off, honestly. Like, I don't I, know. I, I realize that sometimes. That was weird. Come on. Let's get one. Oh, there we got three people. All right. Yeah, what yeah. is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Christian Corey, and today I have my buddy, my pal, and my friend, my Philly fanatic, Philly fanatic friend, Philly's Hot Stove Media, Luke. What is up, Luke? Thank you for joining the live stream tonight. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. So today on this live stream, we'll be talking about all the moves that's transpired the past, what, 24 to 48 hours yeah. in the baseball world. Um, we got, you know, Trevor Story has a new home. The Phillies made some big moves the past couple of days. And the Marlins add a big bat, but it's not Castellanos. So we'll be talking about that today. And uh, we'll see what, you know, what Luke has to say about the moves when it comes to story and his Phillies have made this past uh, 24 to 48 hours. So first Luke. Um, yeah. Let's just, let's just start it off hot topic. Number one, you got Trevor story. You got him signing with the Boston Red Sox. Now, of course our buddy, John Heyman, who I really don't trust half the time he tweeted out it and he said, uh, the Red Sox, he, he said the Red Sox are moving closer to a deal for Trevor story. Bob Nightingale reports. It's agreed to already. So that was last night. And then Heyman right. comes out and he says the Red Sox deal is for $140 million at six years. Now, there's a complicated opt-out in it whereby if he opts out of the Red Sox, in, in it whereby if he opts out, the Red Sox could retain an option to keep him at different terms. So we've seen this in the other two deals, um, most notably – the uh, I believe the the Correa deal had a couple opt outs in it in the, in the beginning of of that contract after like two years. Um, it was only a three year deal. I th and, and also Trevor Bauer when he signed with the Dodgers back a couple of years ago, um, he had a lot of opt outs after year one, year two, and year three. He got only only a three year contract for uh, Mr. Trevor Bauer with the Dodgers, and so basically Heyman says that Trevor Story is going to the Red Sox. And he also mentions real quick that story has agreed to play second base for the Red Sox. Yeah. Of course, Xander Bogarts, you know, has been a long time shortstop over there in Beantown. And, you know, he's won two rings with the Red Sox and Mr. Xander Bogarts. And the funny thing is, is that story has not played one game at the major league level at second base. I did so, not know that. So it, it's, it's, it's an tough. interesting move. I mean, your thoughts on, you know, Trevor Story going to Boston um, and him playing second base, second base other than shortstop. And again, you got to remember he had that, um, I believe it was Tommy John surgery. I think he had it uh, with his elbow. He has some elbow problems. So maybe the short throw yeah. will help him out. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Yeah, well, I don't know if he, you know, you mentioned he didn't have any, you know, appearances at second base in the major league level, but I don't know if he's had appearances – uh, second base in the minor league over or maybe in college or something like that. But I mean, that's a bit of a concern uh, because what does he have? We need like three weeks, you know, around that, like less than three weeks now to try to, yep. you know, get comfortable at second base. You know, he's not going to be entirely comfortable heading into opening day. So uh, as regards for, you know, him going there, I mean, uh, you know, this is a team that fell short in the ALCS last year against the Houston Astros. Uh, they're in a really, really tough division. Um, so they're just trying to, you know, compete with the big guys and they still are going to remain competitive. I mean, as you said, they still got Bogarts and, um, you know, they're going to be, you know, still a very good team. If Martinez continued to stay, you know, productive. Um, and, uh, I believe that Chris Sale, I think he was injured, right? I think, you know, he's, uh, yeah, he has yeah, that yeah. Uh, rib, rib problem, crack, yeah. rib, fracture rib. He, he'll be out for a while. So that's a big blow yeah. to the Red Sox. Yeah, I was just, yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred percent. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not personally a big fan of Trevor Story. Um, you know, he he played at a extremely hitters friendly ballpark and in, in you know a course field. And honestly, I, the 2021 season he put up wasn't anything spectacular in my opinion. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad that my Philly stayed away from him, but I think he's going to be a good fit in Boston. I mean, that's another, you know, hitter friendly offer, of course, nowhere near the course field uh, level. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think he's going to be a good fit there. It seems like he's going to be a good fit, but the second base thing definitely uh, would concern me a little bit. As you said, it is a shorter throw. It's not like he's going from second to short or second to third, yeah. uh, which would be a b bigger transition, but uh, you know, a double plays and things like that can really confuse you at first. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, Obviously, you know, when it comes to the hitting, you know, some could say that Boston will play similar to Coors Field because they have, you know, the big green monster out there in left field. I believe it's only 316 down the left field line in Boston. Mm -hmm. You got the pesky pull out there and right. So, and Story is actually a pretty good all-around hitter. He can hit the yeah, line yeah. drive the opposite way. He could he could hug hug a ball around that pesky pole for a home run. So the offensive numbers honestly um shouldn't be too bad now i wanted to go to baseball savant real quick and just see what they say when it comes to um trevor story's power numbers and what the difference could be um if he plays in boston now i'm looking at it right now and it says that again he hit 24 home runs last season now that is in Coors field not the best year for story when it comes to the power now according to baseball savant He'll hit more home runs, 38 home runs they project him to hit uh, in Boston if he played every day in Boston. So, again, I mean, that's that's good news. I mean, I think the highest he they project him to hit in any ballpark around the majors is Cincinnati, almost at 48 home, 48 home runs if he played at Great American. But 38 home runs, 10 less than what he played than what he would hit at, you know, Great Great American. And a couple more than what he would hit at um, this past year with 24. So, I mean, according to them, they believe that he the power will increase for Trevor Story in Boston, which I believe that as well. I mean, Boston is is a, is a band box at times, and plus and plus he has he has a really good uppercut swing. I mean, honestly, yeah, let's get it over. Yeah, I mean, if he can get the ball up over the green monster, you see a lot of home runs. But he has a lot of line drive approach. A lot of his home runs are pretty low. Low line drive, screaming line drive to just get over the wall. Uh, he he's not like a, a Kyle Schwarber, you know, where he hits these monster tank jobs or a or a Joey Gallo. Again, those are lefties, but you know the swing path is different for Story right. than Bell. Yeah, he, he definitely does. has a significant uppercut in his swing. Yeah, I noticed that in Philly when he was here uh, on September 11th and hit like a jack into the second deck, and like you know, obviously I've seen film with him before. Mm -hmm. And I could really see it in person, like the, the just a massive uppercut in the swing. I mean, uh, you know, yeah. definitely significant. Yeah. Um, now, when it comes to the contract itself, six years, 140 million bucks. I mean, you know, I guess I, I mean, it's what it's not 200 million dollars, which I don't think he's worth anywhere near that. No, no. no, but six years, 140 million bucks for a guy who honestly, you know, when it comes to his overall numbers, um, kind of went down, I would say, if we go to uh, baseball. He's going to get paid you know, around $23 million a year. So, well, Can you repeat that one more time? He's actually – I just uh, just did the calculations. He's going to be getting paid around $23 million a year. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's not terrible. I mean, it's all right. It's it's not – you know, it, it's it's it, – it's it's what the Boston Red Sox offer most guys they want to go after and and you know if you look at Trevor um, Story and his his past numbers when it comes to offense again only two All Star appearances eighteen and nineteen back to back um, let's see here again he had twenty four home runs he matched his two thousand seventeen season his second year in the majors uh, that's actually the lowest home run total. Uh, for Mr. Story in a regular 162 game format last year or in 2020, he had only 11, but that's because of the shortened season. So, the lowest home run total, and I do believe the lowest RBI total uh, aside from his rookie year, um, in the majors for a full 162 game slate. So, the power did go down, there's no doubt about it, right? Right, and you don't know if maybe he was, you know dealing with some, you know, personal issues or maybe a little bit of an injury or something like that. And just sometimes you just kind of get in a funk. It's, you know, baseball, you know, sports, life is just, it's just weird at times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll yeah. see how the contract is, but uh, yeah, that's, that, that was a, that was, was it a shocker to me? It was all right. Yeah. Um, I heard they were in on him though before. So. Yeah. 
I mean, I thought he might go to the Yankees. That's what I thought. You know, well, again, Brian Cashman swung and missed. I mean, Brian Cashman has again, been, again, again. I mean, I think I said it, it. I put this in my uh in my um Carl's Cray video I made at the end of it. Go check it out if you want to go check it mm-hmm. out. Um, I said rip. I said Brian Cashman rip. You know, yeah. just like the tag is that he, he's been there forever. He's like, yeah, wow. he's been there forever. He hasn't signed guys that like y- a Yankee fans want and like are ag- and actually be valuable to the team. Again, right. this is a shortstop position. The Yankees haven't had a good shortstop since Derek Jeter. I right. mean, they just haven't had a reliable guy on both sides of the ball. Um, and you know, you know that you know. I know the defensive metrics hate Derek Jeter for whatever reason. They say he's not that great when it comes to the defense. But, but but again, in the Yankees' minds, you know, Yankee fan minds, they believe that he's one of the best shortstops in their history, which I don't think they're denying that. He's clutch. He made, you know, spectacular plays when it mattered. And that's when it, you know, that's when it counts is when it matters right. in the postseason and the World Series. And, you know, they had a guy like Cray out there, World Series experience, whether you hate him or, or, or you love him. You know, he's been to the World Series, what, uh, three times? Yeah, so, three. Three times, uh, 17, 18, and then 19, right? No, 17, um, uh, 19, and 21. 17, 19, 20. Yep, yep, yep. You're right. So he's been there three times. He knows what, what to do, regardless if he knows the signs or not. You know, he he knows how to how to step up in the big game. Right. And he has a lot of great postseason numbers. Um, so that was a guy they should have got. You know, it was would have been – you know, far away more valuable than a right. guy like Trevor Story, even a guy like Baez, who also won a World Series and been there and done that. So right. that's a big swing and a miss for Cashman. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, man, I don't know what the heck's going on, and I'm sure you probably made a video about this too, but also with the Gary Sanchez and Gio Urshela to the Twins. Yeah. I mean, for Josh Don- washed up Josh Donaldson, who is still owed, you know, some money, man. I yeah, just, I mean. I, I don't know. I, don't, I just don't like that trade. Yeah, but, I don't. I mean, I he's been um, a major disappointment. Also, he's ignored the pitching staff. Like he has, like Garrett Cole. That was probably like the best signing he's made, like probably the past decade. Um, yeah. This, like, honestly, he's just he's just not doing anything. Like I, I, don't, I just don't know what else to say. I mean, he's just. Yeah, I mean, our buddy uh, Mets talk with Hayden Matt uh, Hayden here chimes in. He says Story's power has gone down over the past couple of years, posting an I an ISO of two twenty two or two twenty one past season compared to his 296 in 2016 and his ex iso in this 2020 of 234 yeah i mean the proof is in the pudding um his his power has gone down you know the ballpark will help him hopefully Uh um but yeah and also i forgot to mention guys before i go any further don't forget to uh go check out luke's channel on philly's hot stove (laughs) media um he does some great content there uh, he's, you know, recaps every Philly game, even spring training games. He, he's a grinder uh, just like me. So uh, go go check out his channel. Go subscribe and go subscribe to my channel as well here on MLB Chatterbox. Um, again, Philly's Hot Stove Media. That's on YouTube for Luke and right here, MLB Chatterbox for me, Christian. So, yes, go go subscribe. Ring the bell. Tell your friends about both of our channels. We both appreciate it very, very much. Let's see. Fenway. Yeah, it, it is a hitter's park. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a hitter's park, no doubt about it. Um, electric voltage. All right, it's a cool name. Yeah. Um, let's go Tigers. Yes, yes, yes. Let's go Tigers. Always got to go Tigers. Matthew, who's the most underrated MLB players? I would say Brandon Nimmo and Kyle Tucker. Yes, you know what's funny? I have to talk about this real quick. Luke is me and Hayden were talking about this. I got. I agree. Brandon Nimmo, right there. Most underrated player in all of baseball, a, a, a sound power bat, a guy who puts up the numbers in the power department, uh, a nice le- a nice left-handed bat. Um, great eye. You know, great eye, yep. yep. Good time. discipline, good discipline. Doesn't swing right. it a whole heck of a lot. Good, good oh, play discipline. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I got I got Brandon Nimmo. Um, how about you? I mean, I understand I'm probably going to get flack for this, but I've always thought that Anthony Aaron Dome was very underrated. And like, I understand he had an injury prone, you know, 2021 season, but this is a guy that really has just been snubbed of a lot of awards, in my opinion, over the, over his career. And I think he's, you know, quietly had you know, a very, very good career over at third base and he's dealt with some injuries, but 
Uh, I love his ability to just – he just has one of the nice, like, nice clean strokes to the baseball. Uh, you know, hits for power. You get you like 35 home runs a year, you know, average around, you know, 310 or so. Mm-hmm. And a variety of above average defense. You never really hear the name too much. I mean, uh, I think people kind of given up on him. And I agree about Kyle Tucker, too. I definitely have him in that category as well, the guy who's, you know, definitely underrated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Kyle Tucker has always been – He's been underrated. Why? Well, because, you know, he's been on super teams with the Astros. I mean, he's been overshadowed by Carlos Correa, by Jose Altuve, by, by George Springer, you know, by Justin right. Verlander in the pitching department. Even, you know, when Dallas Keuchel was there, um, right. uh, you know, you have a guy like you know, Lance McCullers Jr. You had Garrett Cole there one year. So he's been overshadowed. Uh, he's actually come up with some great postseason hits and home runs in the world series and such. So I believe that Kyle Tucker is an underrated uh, player and I believe he'll get more appreciation in this right. 2022 season because of, you know, Carl's Correa departing Springer departing. So, you know, all eyes will be on Kyle Tucker and the offense uh, when it comes to the Houston Astros. I agree. Um, now let's, let's first, I want to go to one more, Let's see any more questions here. All my homies like Brandon Nimmo. Yeah, yeah. We we I I, I can't I can't deny it, Luke. I mean, uh, or uh, Hayden. I can't deny it, brother. Yeah. Uh, I love he, how he uh, always when he walks, he like runs the first base. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a gamer. He's a gamer. I like him. Uh, kind of reminds me of Roger Maris a little bit. I mean, not in the sense of the skill, but like he his I don't know his facial features, the way he swings the bat. A yeah. little, you know, he reminds I, I me that. of Roger, a lefty too. He mm. reminds me of Roger Maris a lot. Not saying you got to put up 60 home runs or 61 home runs or anything. I'm just saying. Yeah, just the looks. Yeah. Just the look, you know, the way he swings, goes out, goes about his business, even the face a little bit. Or yeah. Reminds me of um, Roger Maris, of course, a great New York Yankee. Um, now, next topic. <laughs> now, here, here's one where, where, where I would love to hear your take. Sure. Okay. So, Obviously, Philly's made some big moves. They have, uh, you know, they they, they they need to get some offense. Bullpen help is always on the forefront mm-hmm. of that. But they get, they went out, they got offense. Okay. And what did Dave Dombrowski, my former GM here at Detroit, do now with Philly? Well, he got out and he went out and he got a guy like Kyle Schwarber for about just under $80 million bucks. And he got, you know, Nicholas Castellanos for $100 million. Now, of course, John Heyman, you know, tweeted that out. Castellanos gets $100 million for five years with the Phillies, confirmed by multiple reports a couple days ago. Again, Castellanos last year had a 309 average, you know, hit 34 home runs, drove in 100, um, had a 939 OPS, a very good OPS by Castellanos. Um, but he didn't have 121 strikeouts. That's a lot of strikeouts. So a big right, right. guy. Yeah, I'm, 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 trust me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're going to see a lot of strikeouts on this team. We're going to see a lot of you. You, yeah, you are. I mean, yeah. when, when you got, I got Schwarber, you have Harper, Schwarber who can be wild at times. Think, yeah. You got Castellanos now. Hoskins, you know, yep. Hoskins. Strike. So it's going to be Takes a big a swing and miss. A yeah. A big <laughs> swing and miss. Um, yeah, we're going to have a lot of strikeouts on this team. Yeah. Big swing and miss team. Now, I did look this up because I mentioned this in my video. Go check it out if you want after this live stream where I kind of go more in depth on this whole uh, Nicholas Castellanos deal. But according to um, baseball reference, when it comes to the power numbers, you're a Phillies fan. Are you concerned that will go up or down? Well, according to them, it's going to stay the same. 34 home runs. They project Castellanos to hit in Philly, same amount as he did last year. So That's according fair. to them. It's, it, I mean, great American ballpark is very hitter friendly. So It is. I mean, both, yeah. I mean, I mean, ever since he got out of Detroit, he's been, he's been very good. Chicago small ballpark. Cincinnati small ballpark, you know, uh, Boston, a small ballpark. I, I mean, excuse me, not Boston, uh, you know, Philly, small ballpark. Yeah. And I believe that Philly plays a lot like New York. I think, I think yeah. it does, you know, right. And he's a lot of power the other way too. He can, he can go oh. the you know, Apple taco. Um, now this is where I wanted to uh, get the, have your opinion on this comp. So in my mind, I believe what Dombrowski is doing for the Phillies this year in getting the Kyle Schwarber, getting the Castellanos, and getting a Jerry's Familia to help out that bullpen, which I, I know you're not a fan of, and neither yeah. am I. Yeah. Here's my comp. My comp is this. Dombrowski is trying to do what he did back in 2016 with the Tigers. Now, again, this was post their 
you know, their World Series run. This was post their playoff run, really. Their consecutive playoff run, which ran from 2011 to 2014 with an AL pennant at 2012. Was he the GM of the Tigers in 2016? I thought he was with the Red Sox in 2016. Uh, I thought he left was he with the Red Sox? No, I don't know. Was it maybe even 2015? Um, I feel like he... He was, was with the... Because he left in December 2015, I think. I think. Well, it might, it might, it might have been 2015. 15. I, I, I might have. Yeah, for sure. sure. This, yeah, yeah. But sure. regardless, this is what he tried to do. He tried to build a Tiger team. I think it was 15 when they got yeah. Cespedes, right? Yeah, yes, 15. Yes. Yeah. Okay, it was, yep. it was 15. My bad. Yeah, sure. 15. So in 2015, he got Cespedes. He got, you know, JD Martinez. He got, um, you know, Miguel Cabrera was there. He had Kinsler there. Um, um, so J- uh, Victor, Victor Martinez, Martinez. Victor yeah, Martinez, yeah. a lot of power guys, a lot of power. As pitching, starting pitching was okay. Verlander wasn't great back yeah. then, uh, I believe. They didn't have Jordan Zimmerman yet. Yeah, and then um, didn't they have Jordan Zimmerman yet. For, yeah. So and then cool. he went out and he tried to go get um, Joe Nathan, and um, who was that other guy? Uh, Joaquin Soria, mm-hmm. like old bullpen guys to try to fix his bullpen. <laughs> And that and that was terrible. That was that was absolutely horrendous. That's a good it, point. Yeah. It was a bad season. What he tried to do, he tried to win with offense, and then he tried to fix the bullpen by putting a couple small band aids on it with a bunch of old guys that 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 couldn't that couldn't hold down the fort in the later innings. And that's what he's doing. Yeah. With Philadelphia. He's doing that with yeah. Philadelphia, and I'm and, and I'm scared yeah. for Philly fans because I'm telling you, Jerry Familia, not the answer. Could have got. I think this might answer. be a wake up call because you know what? Because I think that. The fans of the city have wanted offense, offense, offense. And I think that, okay, now you got it. Okay, so now is the true test. If we fail this year, which we very well may, I hate to be negative, but now it's going to finally, I think, open up a lot of fans' eyes and say it is the bullpen. And finally, I think they're just going to admit it. Because a lot of people just will not admit it. Yeah, yeah. Not to, like, call out any fans or anything. I'm just I'm just trying to be objective, you know. Yeah. I, I, I love I, Philly fans. Yeah. And another, another guy they got – um in the uh, for the Tigers was Francisco Rodriguez. K. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember he was terrible. Oh God, he was bad. Yeah. He was real bad. Um, but the point is, is that that's what he's doing in Philly. And, and man, it's, it's not going to be good. It's, it's not going to turn out good for you. I mean, I hope it does. I hope it does. I mean, yeah, me you have the extended playoff format. Hopefully, you guys can take advantage of that. Maybe the Braves will falter this year. The Mets they will might, stay competitive. I just don't know. I just really, truly don't know. When it comes to how he's constructing this team, I, I fear for you guys out there in Philadelphia. I, I don't know. Yeah, I I I, I'm agree, I agree with you, man. I mean, you're not even a Phillies fan, you know, you know that. Of course, you're you know you study all the all the teams, but um, yeah, I'm definitely concerned. I mean, and we still have a set closer apparently that it may be Canable, but uh, well, I love. I mean, he did great with the Dodgers last year and paid him ten mil. Uh, you know, this year for just one year. Um, but uh, I don't really know how it's going to work out. I, I really just don't have a good feeling. Also, our rotation, when it's healthy, is very good, but it's not healthy. Zach Lear is not going to be ready for opening day. Zach mm-hmm. Ethel not ready for opening day. So now you're going into the season with not a healthy rotation and just not a great pitching staff all the way around. Yeah, I mean, you're really not. Um, it's, you know, and that start, you know, the starting rotation, I, I think they could have got um, uh, Kershaw. They could have got Kershaw. That would have been a good one for you guys. Yeah. I would have liked that. I mean, I know. now the Good problem cool. is the problem is with with this year in particular is that their free agency when it comes to starting pitching was horrendous. They had nobody out there who was great. They didn't they didn't have a uh, you know a Garrett Cole out there or a Justin no. Verlander out yeah. there. I mean, I, I guess they did have Justin Verlander um, for a because, short period of time. Yeah. For a short period of time, he got signed back with the uh, Astros. But it didn't have like the Strasburgs or the or the or I mean I, they had Serger, which could have been one you know, but right. it, they didn't have those guys, those big names out there. They had a few right. and between when it came to starting pitching, and I thought you know once Verlander left and and and, and you know uh, Max went to New York, I thought you had a counter with getting Kershaw. Now you could have got him on a really cheap deal. You could have got him on a one, two year. Maybe he wanted two years, uh, if you if he if he went somewhere else other than you know uh, the Dodgers. But you could have afforded a guy like Clayton Kershaw. Now yeah. I mean, some may say, oh, he sucks in the postseason. But well, he did a lot of in the postseason. Yeah, I mean yeah. the Phillies haven't made it, so why does that matter to you? 
Right. You know? Right. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that could have been a good one, but I mean, overall, what would you give the grade of the Phillies when it comes to uh, their, their moves? Um, all the way around. I mean, maybe a B minus. I mean, cause like they have really stacked up in the offense, but I mean, it's just like, let's take a look. I mean, we got, okay, let's, let's get excited about the offense, but also at the same time, we have to be objective and say, okay, yes, the offense is exciting. But we have to look, at the team all the way around. And we have to realize that this bullpen is still not where it needs to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's, that's just, I, I don't know how to be more, you know, you know, plain and simple than that. I mean, th- this team needs to address that issue. Yeah. I, I, I wanted the, you're, you're, I know, I know you love um, this guy in the bullpen. Um, oh gosh. You know, I know, I know. I think, you know, who I'm talking about. I'm trying to get the guy's name, right. Um, Let's see. Nobody doesn't um, begin with a J. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. It's it's not it's not familiar. No, 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 no. It's um. Let's see. I know this guy. Um. Uh, Jose Alvarado. Yeah. You love Jose Alvarado, don't you? You love. Oh yeah, him. very much, very much so. I yes. always said though. Here's the thing. Like, I don't like him, but I always liked his stuff. I always thought he had really good stuff. Yeah. Like, I think he has great stuff. Mm-hmm. But he just, he's a head case. He can't locate, he can't command, he can't. Yep. That's the only problem. Like, he, the potential for him is unbelievable. That's what I'll say. I'll say that. Yeah. I'm so disappointed in him. He reminds me of. I always a, thought he had good stuff. He, he reminds me of a, of a guy. He's a throwback name for you. Um, Jose Valverde, Papa Grande. He oh, was my gosh. I see that. Yeah. He was a big reliever in Detroit, and he was a guy who, I know would, that, I mean, yeah. every reliever we ever had, whether it was him or Phil Coke, no one could cut like no one, no one Detroit had, or really no reliever that Dave Dombrowski ever had for in Detroit, at least was like a, was like a Maniara Rivera where, where he comes in and you just know, okay, yeah. One, two, three. I'm confident. I don't know that feeling. Cause when yeah, I, I, either do I, I don't well, know. Brad Lynch was like that. No way. He was, well, I, I was, wasn't old enough to see it, but, but yeah, I mean, he, Detroit man, he had Valverde, he had Phil Coke, he had Joe Nathan, you had, um, K Rod, you had Soria one year. Right. Uh, you had um, there's another guy. You had, oh, uh, uh, Java Chamberlain. I mean, we went through everybody you could think of to to try to close games for Detroit. And every single solitary guy the Tigers threw out there, whether it was you know Jim Leland managing, Brad right. Austin's managing, or uh, you know uh, Garden Hire managing, every guy you went out there, you almost had you had a heart attack. Because you just didn't know if the guy was going to blow it, and most of them in, in the years we won, in the during the regular season, like the Phil Coke, the, the Papa Grande days, they would they would get the job done. But they would get the job done. They come in, they have like a two run lead or like a run lead or whatever, two run lead, give up one run, get the bases loaded, two outs, two two on you know what, let's just say Nelson Cruz with the Rangers, you know back then, and he, and he strike him out, but but he give you a heart attack as he do it. And right. it was just right. so frustrating to watch that. Right. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you're right, man. I mean, that's just, it's never easy. It yeah. To death. Can't lie. Familia's trash. We, I agree. He is trash. I mean, you can't get old guys. That's the problem. Right. You just can't. And, th- and that's what they do. Um, yeah. YouTube Productions, thank you for subbing. And to go check out um, Philly's Hot Sub Media. He deserves a thank sub you. too. He deserves a sub too. He's a good guy. Thank you. Um, Let's see. Will the Tigers make the playoffs? Well, I don't know if they're there yet. Uh, I, 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 uh, with, okay. They're not, they're not in a good division though. So they are not. I, I actually give them a, a leg up on the Phillies when it comes to making the playoffs because of their division, just because of their division. Um, not saying that the, the Tigers are overall better than the Phillies. Obviously, their payroll isn't like the Phillies. Actually, it is, but they don't spend money because their owner is cheap now. Um, but you know, I, I see them, I, I, I could see them making it. I mean, obviously the expanded playoffs helped, you know, from, uh, uh was it, you know, we got 12 teams now. Yeah. So, you know, that helps with the 12 teams in, in, in both, uh, both leagues, but, or overall, um, that helps. I could see them doing it. I mean, in that division, who do you got? You got a guy like, or teams like, uh, you know, the Guardians, I don't believe they're going to be great. Um, you got the White Sox defending AL Central champs. You got to respect them. 
the right. uh, the um the Royals are making some moves, kind of. Eh, they signed Zach Granke, but I don't believe they're going to be that great. Jorge Soler is not there anymore. That mm-hmm. they didn't get him back, and you got a team uh, like the uh, like the Twins, who are apparently going for it with with this Carlos Correa move. I mean, I don't know what the hell they were doing with that one, but you know, I mean, really strange. That was that was more weird than the Trevor. Also, the Gary Sanchez pickup too. I, yep, the Gary Sanchez pickup that you know you said. Josh Donaldson got shipped to New York yeah. and Urshela. I mean, I, I love Gio Urshela. I think he's another underrated, I, another player I probably put in the underrated. Category. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I'm shocked the Yankees dealt him and not, yeah, you know, so. labor, and not labor. Um, but this is my thing when it comes to uh, the Tigers. If I, I was listening to a local radio station today, and a guy said this, a uh, caller said like. I give the Tigers 85 wins. I was like, okay. And I think the guy looked up. I think 85 wins would not even get them to the playoffs in the old format. But I do believe the new format would have got them there. So if you can get 85 wins, I mean, if you can get another, um, let's just say, two wins per your new acquisition, whether it's Baez, whether it's Barnhart, whether it's um, Eduardo Rodriguez, they got picked up from the Red Sox in the starting rotation. If you can pick up an extra two wins per guy, that's two, four, that's another six wins. You're almost halfway there. You're almost at, you know, a couple a couple more wins, eight wins. So um, if, if you can get two, three wins per pickup, per se, I could see them making it, you know, the very last wild card spot. I could see that happen. Uh, uh. But, uh, yeah. Let's see, Dombrowski. Need to fire Dombrowski, 500 team now. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, you know, it's funny. I, I, this is my thing on Dombrowski. I you called like, him Dombrowski. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dumb. Yeah, that is true. Here's the thing about Dombrowski. Dombrowski. Here's my thing: is that he has not been as aggressive as aggressive as what I believe he could have been with Philly. Right. I'm disappointed. I've been disappointed to say the least. Is 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 that not the vibe I'm getting? Because he's not he's not that yeah. aggressive. Well, he's been aggressive the past like two weeks, but I, I agree otherwise. Yeah, I mean he I mean okay, he got the two guys. I think I right. think that's been Middleton though. I don't, I don't think that that's really been Dabrowski. And the thing is, like you know, like I'm thinking in my in my mind, right? Because I we've had him here, and what he would do, he got Miguel Cabrera via trade. He got half of these guys, you know, the big guys via trade. JD Martinez via trade. Max and he Scherzer traded Miguel trade. Cabrera to the Tigers, right? Yeah, he couldn't use it the Marlins, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so you got Miguel via trade. You had, um, you got Serger via trade. Yeah, who else did you get via trade? I think, I think, um, it was Fister might have been via trade. Um, Verlander was a draft pick. Um, you know, uh, like Delman Young in 2012, he was a trade. So he, all the guys the Tigers got Del in the Young coming years, yeah. yeah, and the coming years, uh, Ian Kinzer, Ian Kinzer mm-hmm. was a trade. They traded actually Prince Fielder, who they signed for like an eight-year contract, traded him after two years to Texas. That worked out pretty well, considering Prince got a neck injury in his career. But he got all these big guys via trade. Cespedes is via trade. My point is, is this. This is my point. He had a farm system in Detroit that was pretty good, and he could make these moves. Your farm system sucks. He can't right. do that. And this is a ter- – the Phillies are terribly built for that type of GM. Right. I agree with you 100%. I think it was a bad hire. I mean, if you if you had a, a, a you know, a top five, you know, uh, you know, pipeline and, 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 you know, farm system, yeah, sure. I mean, he, he'll be willing and dealing all night. But he but. just hasn't been doing that, and that's where I believe he's – He's really underperformed. I guess not, you can't blame him for that, but right. that's where his MO is. His MO is wheeling and dealing. When you can't do that, you're stuck with signing guys and spending people's money. Because let's be honest, anybody can spend money. You right. know, yeah. it, it, there's a technique when it comes to actually trading for certain guys and making a good trade work out. So um, that was my thought. But I agree. let's see what else we got here. Jorge Soler to the Marlins. How about that? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's. I think it's going to be a, a signing where I mean, the Marlins team that's still young, up and coming. You have a guy who knows how to win and got to hit, get like close to fifty home runs with the Royals. What was that like twenty nineteen? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's going to provide some better veteran leadership, and I think he's definitely going to be a you know, definitely a scary bat in that lineup. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 
it's funny because, you know, they were in on Castellanos. And now that I think about it, it's like, huh, you can afford Soler, but not Castellanos. I mean, I guess yeah. the Soler deal, I mean, the Castellanos was $100 million. Soler they got for three years, 36. I guess significantly less when it comes to the AAV and overall, you know, value of the contract. But, I mean, you know, Jeter's out in Miami. So it's like the Marlins are trying to stay competitive. Um but I don't know. I, I kind of see them like the twins. Like they're trying to stay competitive. Like, the, like they're the, a little like, bit younger than the twins. So that's they are I'm younger thinking. than the twins. Yeah. But I feel like that's like their their mindset. Like we want to stay young. We want to stay competitive. We want to give a signal to our fans that hey, we want to win or try to win. But we don't. But we're not going to break the bank in the process of it. So it's like because let's be honest. I mean, sure Hayden knows if he's still in here. Hayden, you know. He he lives in Florida and he he goes yep. to Marlins games. They, they 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 don't pack that ballpark. You know, no, no. no they don't. I mean, they, they yep. have problems selling them. tickets. Okay. Um, the only time they pack the ballpark is when the World Baseball Classic comes around. So it's you know that that's that's their problem. And I don't know. I mean, what wh- what does this Jorge Soler signing mean in the eyes of a Marlins fan? Um, I, I just think that it's just going to be one of those things that's going to provide some veteran leadership to the, because that's a really, really young team. And that's yeah. really, it's almost like, maybe not to this extent, but like Nelson Cruz to the Nationals. Like that just doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. And that's like pretty much the only explanation I could have for that. Um, yeah. And he doesn't have an opt out in the, in the deal at all, which is interesting. Uh, now I, I think, I don't think he has any no trade clause either, because I think that that, that might be a strategy too. They sign him. For you know, pretty you know, not 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 a terrible contract. Then they trade him whenever, whether it's year one or year two, they trade him to get whatever they need at whatever time. I, I could see that happening. Him, no pressure, in Miami, um, a, a relatively small division when it comes to the ballparks. I'd and, be surprised if they did that. I mean, I, I guess if you want to get value out of it, and you're not, yeah. and you're not, um, and you're not. Um, winning, you know, you're not winning and you're not getting what you think, what you thought out of him, then I could see, um, I could see them flipping him, but it was an interesting deal. And a lot of weird deals, as I noted, yeah. all the teams that have been making these big deals, the Rockies, the twins, the Marlins, um, you know, the teams, all, all yeah, these, even, I, I didn't even think that Costianos would go to the Phillies either. I thought that was, yeah, funny. even that to an extent. Um, uh, I mean, the Mariners, I, I feel, feel like Schwarber he, wasn't, wasn't weird though. Yeah, Schwarber like wasn't weird. Schwarber yeah. wasn't weird. Um, yeah. Was Cassianos weird? Uh, it wasn't that. Yeah, I'd say that was kind of. It wasn't. It wasn't terrible. Um, I feel like they could have got pitching, but I mean, to me, you know, this is my thing. Phillies are operating. This. This is my thing. Phillies, Angels, Yankees, they've operated the same. And how? What I mean by that? They only go after bats. They never get the starting pitching. They never and do. Bullpen. Yeah. And bullpen. You know, yeah. you know, you, you when you're Artie Moreno out there in L.A. Oh, we, you know, in the year of uh, at the 2019 offseason, you know, after they won the World Series with the Nationals, and you're going to 2020. Again, this is pre-COVID, so you're thinking, all right, the Phillies are going to go out there and get, or their Angels are going to go out there and get, um, uh, you know, like Strasburg or or, or someone like that, or or you know, yeah, you know, Rendon, yeah, yeah, whoever was out there, you you got to get Rendon. It's like why, why, why are you getting another bat? You know, and you then, have yeah. in that lineup. You have Trout in that lineup. You have Otani in the lineup. Now you have Rendon. You had Pools at the time. I mean, you had all these hitters, and it was like you guys don't get it out there in LA. You have to pitch. You have to pitch. You right. have to. I mean, think about it. The Tigers won ninety five games in two thousand twelve. They had the, the best starting rotation, you know, in baseball at the time. Their offense wasn't great. You know, the, actually was a pretty low, low producing offense. They won 95 games. They got to the World Series. Granted, they lost, but they got there. The Angels, they they don't do that. They don't take that mindset of we got to go get starting pitching. Well, what do they do? They go out and they get Matt Harvey and then they go out and they get, you know, um, uh, um, Syndergaard, who's washed up right. now. It's like, why? Why are you getting these washed up guys? Right. I agree. It's just it's just weird. Um, I think Kendall Graven, I, I would have loved him on the Phils. Yeah. I'm so disappointed about that. 
Luke says, I will say Lone Depot Park gets a fair attendance, but nothing to the Dodgers, Mets, Yankees, Padres game. It really depends on the day and the game. Usually 15,000, 20,000 fans in attendance. Yeah, but I mean, what's the capacity of the, of yeah. the stadium? You know, I mean, 15 to 20,000. I mean, anytime again, am I watching Marlins games religiously? No, I'm not. But, you know, you know, <laughs> who does right? <laughs> um, right. But you know, when I, I just feel like, you know, they don't they don't do that great when it comes to the yeah. attendance. And it's just, you know, it's I'm surprised they haven't moved. I mean, it's all the all the buzz about, you know, the Rays moving, the A's moving, but those are the two teams that, you know, when they're good, I mean, it, I mean, look, if a team's good, the the, play, the fans are gonna show up. It doesn't matter. You know, if a team's good, whether any sport, whether it's baseball, football, basketball, hockey, whatever, fans are gonna show up if the team's good. If the team's not good. They're not going to show up. And the problem is the Marlins have not had a winning season. I guess, you know, 2020 they did, but no one showed up to the ballpark. They haven't had a winning season, you know, since, you know, 2003, you could say, when it comes to them actually making the postseason. Because, again, pre-2003 um, or, you know, post-2003 was the last time they made the, uh, the, the, the playoffs. I mean, you know, uh, so, I mean, they made the playoffs in 2020. That was the first time since 2003, and of course, one year they make it, you know, no fans. So you know, it's it's been it's been a tough road down there in Miami. I'm shocked they haven't moved the team by now. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. it's not a baseball town, that's for sure. It is not. Um, Seth pitching wins championships. That is true, as you know, Luke. I mean, think about it, Luke. Back in 2008, you know, 2008 nine when the Phillies were winning the pennants in the one World Series against the Rays. They had a good starting rotation. Oh, they had a great starting rotation. Yeah. You know, I mean, they actually were just, better in 09 than it was in 08, believe it or not. <laughs> really? Who 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 is the, do you remember the rotation in 0809? Well, I know I actually know my rotation better in 09 I do. I mean, it was you know, Hamels, Lee, Moyer was still there. We had Martinez. Uh, but in 08, we had like Blanton, you know, Jamie Moyer. Um, you know, I believe Brett Myers got, you know, a few starts as well. Um, you know, so honestly, I I liked our rotation better in 09. It actually was better in 2010 as well, you know, when we had, you know, um, uh, no, how, no, how would I got, yeah, how would I got here in 2010? And uh, yeah. you know, we got Roy Oswald, uh, Lee, no, no, Lee was, no, Lee wasn't with us in 2010. Then he came back in 2011. Um, but that, that was a big problem because Ruben Mar Jr. delayed the three horses because um, mm. then he, traded uh lee to the i think it was the mariners and then he went to the rangers and then he was afraid and didn't sign back with us so um it's just amazing because honestly i think the Phillies should have won at least uh more than just one championship in that window because honestly the yeah. oa team <laughs> was wasn't as good as the other teams and they they won with the oa team it's just baseball is just a weird sport really is yeah i mean if you think about it you know they they had it they had a, a an easy and inexperienced opponent in the rays um, again, they went up against the Yankees in 2009. Um, so they have a opponent. Team. It was a tough team. Let's see. Post season. I'm trying to look up the 2000 in, uh, in 10 post season. So who, okay. 2010, you would have faced the Rangers. Um, you could have faced the Rangers, the twins, or the Rays that year, yeah, uh, in the American League. So you you got you got the worst team possible you could face in the in. Uh, yeah. I, no, that was two thousand. I'm sorry, two thousand eight. I was looking at two thousand. Yeah. Sorry, two thousand eight. Two thousand eight postseason. Let's see. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to look at this. Who was in the two thousand? In postseason. Okay, here we go. So you had the Phillies and the Rays. The Phillies could have got Boston, the White Sox, or the Angels. And then remember, the Angels were good back then. Right. So, I mean, they they got the best opponent in 2008 in the Rays. I mean, they had a, an experienced right. team. Uh, the White Sox were experienced a couple years removed from their 2005 championship. Boston was a couple years removed from their 2007 One championship. Year, yeah. A year mm-hmm. removed, right? So, mm-hmm. I mean, they they got the best they could possibly get in their opponent, and then 2009 postseason. Um, let's see here. 2009 postseason. Uh, okay, you would have got the Angels again, Boston, and Minnesota. 
Um, so again, you got the worst opponent. So you got, you got the best opponent one year, you got the worst right. opponent the next year. Right. So, I mean, you know, could the Phillies, you know, could they have beaten the Red Sox in 2008 or, or the angels who really knows? Um, I view yeah. it as the Phillies got lucky in 2008 in their opponent and they got unlucky in 2009. So, yep. Let's see. Out of their control, you know, in, yeah. In play like that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Wayne says the Rays should become the Montreal Expos and bail on Tampa. They don't deserve a baseball team. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I agree, you know, um, That'd be interesting. it would be interesting. I would, I would, I, 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 I do you think, do you see them expanding or do you see them moving? No, because the I think they, they like said, no, we're not doing it. I think, I think that really, was yeah. Did they say that? Uh, see yeah. that, that that's a bad move. I, I mean, you know, I would move the Marlins. That would be me, but you know, they can't because they won a championship there. Right. Because again, yeah. the Expos never won a championship. Mm -hmm. um, so that was an easy move. I feel like in a way, because you know, it was Canada. They never won. They had one good season and that got canceled by the strike. So, yeah. You know, so that was a little easier move than I think moving the Marlins, even though the Marlins are atrocious um, as a, a, you know, when it comes to, you know, their performance, let's see. Baseball is unpredictable, which makes it fun. Yeah. Think? Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely think it. sports like football are more predictable. Yeah. It's like yeah. the Rams winning the Super Bowl. I, I think we kind of saw that coming. Like, not going to lie. Yeah. Even though yeah. the Bengals could have won that game. But anyway, that's all another. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's see. Um, you follow me, uh, minor league or baseball prospects. I try I my best. Yeah, I kind of try. I'm honestly, I know the Tigers prospects. That's pretty much it. I'm trying to get Hayden. Like Riley Green. Green. Yeah. yeah, Riley Green. <laughs> Actually, uh, he had a home run, I think, a couple days yeah, ago. Yeah, against us. Yeah. Yeah, against you guys. He had a home run. Purkelson didn't do well. Baez hit a double today. Um, there's another, I don't, I think that was the only prospect that, that went off of the Tigers. How, how, how about you guys? I know you guys, you know. Um, oh, man. Um, you know, I, honestly, like, every, like, believe me, like, I know we've been a disaster with our farm system, but, like, I feel like the guys we got are, like, especially, like, in the in the pitching area, I mean, we, we got, like, a lot of guys that can, like, top out some, like, some high, you know, I'm telling you that right now with their fastball. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, they're going to generate a lot of swings and a lot of swings and misses, and they love using the fastball. And also, with, you know, Bryson Scott, He's our number two prospect. So this is a guy that can hit to all fields, and he has great range of short, great defense a team that, you know, right now is not a very good good defensive team. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, also, Juan Rojas is our number six prospect. Um, you know, he's been criticized, not really, you know, putting up the greatest on-base numbers. He doesn't strike out a lot, though, uh, on the contrary. Um, but, uh, I mean, this guy hits the ball very, very hard, and uh, he's fast. Um, and, uh, you know, I, honestly, like, I'm not, like, like angry about like our, I feel like I feel like it's a maybe a tad underrated like believe me like I know I understand this is not a good farm system but um I actually do like a lot of our younger guys like you know like in the top 10 yeah yeah I agree Francisco Alvarez and Brett Beatty there you go mm -hmm. boom right there yeah I yeah, mean, Hayden actually met Alvarez the other day so yeah he did I, I saw the pictures and yeah was down in, got uh, some text messages out of it. <laughs> yes 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 um Port St. Lucie yeah that was uh, that was uh, that was, that was pretty cool to see that he he met he met Billy Epler too. He met the yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He, he was he was finessing everybody. Right. Yeah, he was. That was that was that was pretty cool picks by uh, our friend Hayden. So, anything else you want to add? I mean, anything. Yeah, I think that's pretty much. It. I mean, um, yeah, I think that you know this team is definitely in a weird spot right now. Like, you know, we're going all in. Like, this is. Like Dave made this decision. I mean, I think you know John Middleton also was in on this too. And you know, of course, since he's the magic partner slash owner, and you know, like this is the road we're trying to go down. We're going all in. So I mean, buckle up. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. So I mean, it's it may not work or it may work. I mean, who knows? I mean, but definitely the pitching staff not where it needs to be. I mean, as you know, rest assured, it's it's not where it needs to be. Yeah, I, I agree. They 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 have to address that pitching staff and the bullpen. I mean, it's just. I mean, I, I get it. The lockout's a big excuse and what have you. Um, but, you know, you. I mean, I'm surprised he hasn't been that aggressive. I mean, he's been aggressive, but it's just like I'm sure he's made tons of calls and stuff. And, you know, 
it, it, you know, of course, people criticize only what they know and what they've heard and what happened. You know, right. you know, they're going to they're going to criticize of what they saw, and what they didn't see. They, what you know, what they saw was he got Castellanos and he got Kyle Schwarber and that was about it. You know, and then Familia. So it's like, all right, you got three, you got two big bats. You got a guy who's old for your bullpen and, and, and you're expecting to go to war with these guys for 162. So, yeah. I mean, you know, he has work to do in Dombrowski. Um, I'm shocked of how lackadaisical he's been with the Phillies, but um, we'll see how it goes uh, for your Philadelphia Phillies and my Detroit mm-hmm. Tigers here in 2000 yeah. and 20. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be fun. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I thank you for coming on for the stream. Oh, thanks for having me. And uh, don't forget uh, to subscribe to Philly Stats Soul Media um, on YouTube and follow him on Instagram as well. And he, I think he writes some articles, right? I'm sorry? You, you write some articles too? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have yeah. – uh, I actually have somebody uh, once a week, you know, like, you know, I just have someone write, write an article for my website. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, fun stream. Yes, sir. Bye, guys. All right. Yes, don't forget to subscribe to myself, MLB Chatterbox, here on YouTube, and follow me on Instagram at MLB underscore chatter underscore box. I thank everybody for tuning in for this live stream here on Sunday night. Uh, my name is Christian Corey. This guy's Luke, and I will catch you guys later. And broadcast.